It's a new year. That means we've got some new terrifying films headed our way. So here's my most anticipated horror films of 2024. While I'm talking, be sure to join me down below in the comment section. Let me know your most anticipated horror films of 2024. And especially if I missed a movie that you think I would enjoy, let me know about it down below in the comment section. Today's video is brought to you by Magic Spoon. Growing up, I loved cereal. I'd eat cereal with milk in the morning and then I'd eat cereal straight out of the box in the afternoon. But as I get older, I don't like the sugar and the empty carbs so much. Magic Spoon is a cereal that's high protein zero sugar, and that's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. They offer a variety pack that has four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. This pack has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five grams of net carbs, and only 140 calories per serving. In my house for the last two years, we've always kept Magic Spoon in the pantry. My favorite flavor is actually to mix cocoa and peanut butter together, and I'll just eat it as a snack while I watch movies. Go to magicspoon.com slash Sean Chandler to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use promo code Sean Chandler at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, you will get a 100% refund no questions asked. Remember to start the new year off right with a delicious bowl of high protein cereal at magicspoon.com slash Sean Chandler and use code Sean Chandler to save $5. Thank you Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to it. As we go into this, these aren't in any particular order and I tried to have a very loose definition of horror so more films could be included rather than gatekeeping the definition and let's get started. First up, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I don't know if it's a horror movie, but it is an entry level spooky movie. The sort of film that gets my kids into scary movies and on the horror path so I'm all on board in including it on a list like this. Of course, I grew up on the original Ghostbusters, absolutely adore it, and I loved Ghostbusters Afterlife, and maybe more importantly, um, my YouTube channel started when I reviewed Ghostbusters 2016, so I'm like, the one person on the planet that can say that Ghostbusters 2016 changed the trajectory of my life, but since I liked Ghostbusters Afterlife, what they set up there and what they've teased with this new movie that we're back in New York City, but it's a different type of story. It's not kind of rehashing the formula of the original Ghostbusters, which is kind of what Ghostbusters 2 did. It's what Ghostbusters 2016 did, and it's what Ghostbusters Afterlife did. And they've said they're taking inspiration from the real Ghostbusters animated show that I grew up watching. All of that sounds great to me. The new people they brought in, like Kumal Nanjiani, Pot Patton Oswald, all of it sounds great, so can't wait to see this one. Next up, The Toxic Avenger. Now, I actually saw this movie like six months back at Fantastic Fest. Uh, once again, I don't know if it's a horror movie, but it is a movie with a lot of gore and violence in it and freaky monster creatures and stuff like that. But if you like trauma films, if you like the original Toxic Avenger, we got a new one coming out that I thought it was fun. It, it, it was enjoyable enough. And it's always tough, like how do you take something like Troma and remake it with better production values? And if you give a Troma movie better production values, doesn't that kind of compromise the entire charm of a Troma movie? But I, I think they found a nice balance in delivering a film that put a smile on my face. Maxine, the third film in the X trilogy. Now, I wasn't as crazy about X as it seemed like the rest of the horror community was, but I did have a pretty good time with Pearl and found this bizarro, murderous version of A Wizard of Oz <laughs> to be kind of interesting with what it did. I have no idea exactly what this movie will be since it, of course, is set after X. I would assume it's a little bit more in that vein, but even given that that film was intentionally off in this isolated location and this is going into the city, it's a, such a wildly different film from the other two. And that's kind of what makes this trilogy so fascinating is that there is the through line that pulls it all together, but at the same time, they're all so unique and different. Eleven, the new Jordan Peele film. And as I said, these aren't actually in any sort of numerical order, so that 11 means absolutely nothing. And this movie 
might not, probably isn't coming out this year. It has been removed from the release schedule, but it was originally released from 2024, so I thought I would at least mention it here. But Jordan Peele has his next horror thriller coming out sometime in the near future. I don't think he's come close to matching what he did in Get Out since Get Out, and so my interest in future films has dwindled a little bit. I hope that he dials back the metaphors and symbolism in this next one and gets to something a little bit more straightforward with a clear message rather than so many layered things that have mixed results. So we'll see what happens, but he's an interesting enough director that he's someone that I pay attention to even if I'm not as confident that I will like the film as I was a few years back. Number 10 slot, Nosferatu, the new Robert Edgar's film. And this is a film that has been a passion project for him for a long time. You do have a great cast and he's an interesting director. He's not exactly my cup of tea. He's not one that is exactly on my wavelength, but he's someone that has a unique vision and style. And in an era where we get so many movies that are just big, Franchise films, IP films that feel just like they're created through an assembly line directed by a committee and, you know, the phrase feels like the script was written by AI. You absolutely can't say that about a Robert Edgar's, Edgar's films. He has something distinct he's trying to say and do. He picks projects he's passionate about, and this is one he's been had on his mind for quite some time. Lisa Frankenstein. This is a movie where when I first saw the trailer for it, I didn't pay that much attention to it. it seemed like the sort of thing that I would have fun with, but didn't pop out that much to me simply because we've kind of had movies like this before. Then I looked at who was making it and it's being written by Diablo Cody, uh, most famous for writing Juno, but then, then again, Jennifer's Body. And it feels like kind of a return to, to some of the stuff that put her on the map initially. The other thing that made me go, oh, I just want to check that out. Even if it's not exactly something that might be my exact thing, the reason I'm very interested in it, it's directed by Zelda Williams, Robin Williams' daughter. And so I'm just curious, what will she bring to the table? What will it be? And hoping for the best that she can put out a movie that I will thoroughly enjoy and can recommend to all of you. But in particular, because of who's working on it behind the scenes, it's very much on my radar now. Speaking of daughters of famous people, The Watchers. This is a movie co-written and directed by Ishana Shyamalan, daughter of M. Night Shyamalan. And it's about someone that kind of gets lost in this immaculate forest and then comes across some strangers. And there's some creature that comes at night. So exactly what will the movie be? How much is it horror, intrigue, thriller, mystery? I don't know, but it's M. Night Shyamalan's daughter. So I go, I just want to check that out. Let me let me see what that's going to be like. Is this going to be like early Shyamalan? Is she going to capture that magic? Is it going to be atrocious like late zeros, early teens Shyamalan? Or will it be as mixed as the Shyamalan of the last 10 years? I don't know, but I'm curious to see what she can bring to the table. And if there's some chance that she's got some of that early M. Night spark, hey, that's awesome. One article I found described it as a gothic fairy tale. I'm intrigued. Speaking of M. Night, he's got his own new film, Trap. This is a psychological horror film or thriller. We don't know much about it, except that it stars Josh Hartnett. Now, M. Night Shyamalan has had an incredibly spotty track record. Of, uh, he's put out some of my absolute favorite films of all time. He's put out some adorable, abysmal films. He's put out some totally generic films. And then as of recently, he's had a pretty mixed bag, but at least they feel like M. Night Shyamalan films that going back to kind of what we said before about like a Robert Eggers or even a Jordan Peele, they have a distinct style. And so whenever M. Night puts out a movie, it might be garbage, but I'm interested. I'm rooting for the guy. There, he has it in him to give us something fantastic. I don't know if that's what this will be. I'm curious. Also, Josh Hartnett, I think, has been on a, a, a solid little uh, re, re, um, 
revival tour. So like last year, of course, he was in Oppenheimer. And I felt in Oppenheimer, though, not being one of the flashier characters or stars in the film, had some of the most screen presence I've ever seen him have. But he was also in the Guy Ritchie movie earlier in the year. So putting him in the lead of an M. Night film, I'm all for it. Six, Abigail. This is a movie that a month ago was absolutely not on my radar. And then they dropped the trailer. This is a new film from Radio Silence, the crew that did the last couple of Scream films as well as Ready or Not. And so I've enjoyed all the films that they've done thus far. And the basic premise for this movie is that a group of people are hired to kidnap a little girl. She's a ballerina. They're locked in this house for the night. Then as it turns out, this little girl is a vampire and things go wild and crazy. Uh, everything about it seemed very much like my kind of thing. You're coming from directors that I enjoy as well as I like kind of these close quarters uh, survival horror films. And it has a flair to it. A ballerina, vampire, killing, robbers. Hey, sounds fun. Speaking of fun, Terrifier 3 is going to be a Christmas movie. Now, I didn't watch the original Terrifier when it first came out. I first watched it a week or so before I saw Terrifier 2 because I was going to see Terrifier 2 at Fantastic Fest and Art the Clown and the director and everyone was going to be there. And so I was like, all right, I probably should, you know. Be, get caught up on this. It didn't think too much of it. It was like, okay, mildly amusing, oh, shocking, extreme, cool. And then had such a pleasant experience watching Terrifier 2 of uh, it just, the way they built out a lore for everything, how ex like over the top everything was, the way that it in influences from like Nightmare on Elm Street. It was just a movie that made a mark that had a distinct flavor, a sense of humor. It was twisted and dark and it just like made me excited for Terrifier movies. And then there was a kind of a kind of fun journey of this crowdfunded ultra low budget horror movie going on to make so much money opening weekend through a, a very limited release that the release was extended, put on more theaters and ended up making, you know, uh, 20 times its budget at the box office. It's a cool story. We got a new one coming out. It's a Christmas movie. I, I don't know if there was just some lightning in a bottle fun that happened with Terrifier 2. I don't know if it's going to go too far. Me like, no, nope, I'm sorry. That's offensive art. You can't uh, kill kids like that. You've crossed a line for me, good sir. I have no idea, but I'm absolutely looking forward to see what they've got cooked up for us this time. Real quick, before I give you my top four, remember to join me down below in the comment section, share your most anticipated horror films. Also, I'm gonna be at Megacon this next week, all four days, February 1st through the 4th in Orlando, Florida. I'm leading a bunch of different panels. One of them is on the terrifying state of horror movies with Cody Leach, Adam Does Movies, and some other people where we're gonna talk about what we're excited about in horror movies right now, the, the trends we're not so crazy about right now, all of that fun stuff. But we got a panel on comic book movies, talking about YouTube, hot takes, bunch of other fun stuff. So if you're anywhere on planet Earth or in the multiverse, you want to make it out to Megacon this next week, February 1st through the 4th in Orlando, Florida. Details on the panels and everything are down below in the, the description. Number four on here, Wolfman from Lee Wanell. And I feel like he's just kind of on a hot streak right now. Now he's not cranking out movies and maybe that's why he's on a hot streak, but I thought both Upgrade and The Invisible Man were just really good, smart, well-crafted films. That it felt like he really thought through the script, what he was trying to communicate, and then crafted a unique, interesting experience for the viewer. And so, Excuse me. So that his next movie in the works is Wolfman. Whatever it was going to be, I was going to be excited for it, but that it's kind of continuing down that Universal Monster remake adaptation path. Hey, I'm game for it. I just want to see what he's going to do next. Speaking of being on a hot streak, Saw 11. Now, I thought Saw X was the best movie in the entire franchise, which it's not... Often that the 10th movie is the best movie, but for me, 
they tweaked the formula just to right, just enough to make it for a more enjoyable experience for me overall. In particular, Jigsaw has never been the lead character in a Saw movie before. He's the star of the franchise, but even in Saw 2 and 3, we're following other characters. They're the ones kind of driving things. He kind of comes into the action a little bit into it. He's important, but he wasn't the star. Saw X made him the star, and it treated him like an anti-hero and gave us actual villains. And just those little tweaks made all the difference. So I don't know if Saw 11 will live up to Saw X or like so many times in the past where they put out a good Saw movie and then rush to put out a sequel the next year and the quality dropped a lot. I don't know what it's gonna be. We've got new writers coming in. Doesn't necessarily make me nervous, but it is something to be aware of. So we'll see. But for the first time ever, I'm like optimistic about where the Saw franchise is headed. Next to last one on here, A Quiet Place, Day One. Once again, is it a horror movie? Is it a thriller with horror elements? I don't know, but I'm not trying to be a gatekeeper with this video. I thoroughly enjoyed the first two A Quiet Place movies. This is a spinoff prequel. John Krasinski is not the director of this one, though he was heavily involved. It's being directed by the director of the movie Pig, which was a Nicolas Cage film from a couple years back. It's kind of like John Wick, except if John Wick wasn't an action movie and it was about the underground world of chefs in Portland, which sounds really like an insane comparison to John Wick, but it actually is quite a bit like John Wick. Um, if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I, enjoy, I really enjoyed Pig. I thought it was an interesting film. So I very much want to see what he's going to do with A Quiet Place. Uh, it's got Eddie Munson from Stranger Things as one of our leads in here. I've been looking forward to see him show up in more stuff ever since Stranger Things propelled him into a next level of stardom. So this one for me is just one, I, I can't wait to see what we're gonna kind of do with it. I know someone that saw it at a test screening or someone who saw it at a test screening messaged me. They told me it's a little slower paced and that was kind of in, inherent to the nature of the story, but they said it was a good and it, it the slower pacing fit the movie that was being made. But of course, my most anticipated film of the year, Mickey's Mousetrap. Every year I get excited to find out which low budget filmmaker will exploit the public domain to put a extremely superficial IP skin on their crappy horror film. And this year we get a bunch of them. We got Mickey's Mouse Trap, can't wait. We got another Mickey Mouse film coming up that just sounds fantastic. And of course, one of my favorites from last year gets a sequel, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Can't wait, to, wait a minute, these all sound awful. How is this a trend? And we're not too far away from Superman hitting the public domain. It's coming, it's coming. Last one on here, Alien Romulus. I love Alien and Aliens, some of my absolute favorite films. The Alien films since then have been um, of varying quality, generally speaking, disappointing me. I'm actually very excited for this one. They got Fede Alvarez coming in to direct it. And so he did the Evil Dead movie 10 years ago. He did Don't Breathe. I think his talent at making these close quarter thrillers, horror films, matches the Alien franchise really nicely. That can get us back to what made the first two films so great. And it'll have his own flavor to it. It won't be a rehash of what Ridley Scott or James Cameron did, but it'll fit the franchise and be a nice compliment to it. I feel like this is us heading in very much the right direction. And, and so this is one for me I can't wait to check out. Also, it was originally going to be like a, a Hulu exclusive, and then they thought it was good enough they'll put it in theaters. I imagine some of that's because Prey was so well received. And I think doing the Prey formula for the Alien franchise, I can't wait to check it out. So... This is one of my most anticipated of the year. Remember, if you're looking to improve your diet this year, check out Magic Spoon at the link down below in the description. I'll be at MegaCon this next week with Cody Leach. We got a horror panel plan. More details on that are also down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.